Part 25 of Rebuilding a Large Clarkson Single Cylinder Vertical Steam Engine and this is all about refitting the steam cylinder. This pot of stuff I have in my hand is like a gasket compound. It's a little bit like Boss White that plumbers use. And the reason for using it to help the gasket along with sealing the joints is that the joints are quite thin on this engine. It's a very scale looking engine, plenty of studs and there are plenty of places for the steam to leak out. So I'm just using this stuff to help the gasket along. In an ideal world the gasket will seal perfectly and I'm sure this one will. It's good quality gasket material. But just in case, I don't want to have to take off all of these nuts to remove the thing again if I get a steam leak. Now it's time to fit the cylinder to the main standard. There are many bad things about this engine. But the good thing about this engine, and it really is a good thing, is that the holes in the standard and the holes in the top cylinder cover are very accurately drilled. So the studs go all the way through the lower cylinder cover and the top of the standard itself. Now for the fun part. The first thing that you must not do is put a nut on one of the studs and tighten it up. Because as you can see, the cylinder is lifted off the cover to allow me to get the nuts into place. As I've got older, my eyesight's definitely got worse. It's not too bad with these. These are 4 BA nuts. But sometimes I work with 10 BA nuts and bolts. And I really just do that by feel because I can't see them. If they drop on the floor, I don't even bother looking for them anymore. Here's quite a good tip. For locating nuts on studs in inaccessible places, a good thing to use as a tool to do this is a needle file. So you sit the nut on the needle file and then use another needle file to persuade the nut to engage with the thread on the stud. It's very, very fiddly and you will need a lot of patience for this. Taking mind-altering drugs is not the answer. Just slowly work your way around until you get all the nuts onto the studs. You don't have to use needle files. Any thin piece of metal would do to hold the nut. But I find that because the needle files have got serrations on them, the nuts are less prone to falling off the needle file. Well, here's the exception to the rule. But generally, the nut will stay on the needle file long enough to start the thread on the stud. Once the nut has started on the stud, it's easy enough to run them up by using your finger. And if that's not the case, if they're a little bit stiff, then a small spanner like this. Don't tighten each one in turn though. First of all, just run them to the top of the stud go to the next one, and so on and so forth. And once you've got all the nuts in place, then work your way around. And the best way to do it is like a car cylinder head. Do them on opposite sides. And then just work your way around, tightening up all the other ones. Even though these model engineering spanners are very small, you can still shear the nuts off quite easily by putting too much pressure on with the spanner. So be careful. Spin the nuts up by hand as far as possible and then just knit them up like this a couple of turns. You'll know when it's right. And a sharp crack followed by the nut and broken stud falling off is not what you want to hear or see. I watch other people sometimes working on engines and I can also say it's not a good idea to dither either. You have to be positive but don't put a lot of torque onto these nuts. They are very fragile really. Six of these nuts on the studs that are over the stanchion supports at each side have to be done the hard way by being tightened with a small spanner. The good news is once you get past these, you can fit a socket onto a screwdriver handle type fitting and tighten them up that way. But please be aware that even a screwdriver handle socket can shear the nuts and studs. And the other bit of good news is that you can also start them onto the studs just by using the socket. All you do is you put another nut down in the bottom of the socket, then place the nut that you want to use on top of that, and it's plain sailing, you can just screw away to your heart's content. The job satisfaction varies. It really depends how good the engine is. If I'm working on a really bad engine, then I find it tedious. But if the engine is basically okay, I like the Stuart Major Beam engine really good. It was a pleasure to work on it. This one's so-so. It's not brilliantly made, but it will turn out to be a very good steam engine. After applying copious amounts of steam oil to the piston and the cylinder wall, I'm just turning over the engine to see what it feels like and it feels absolutely beautiful. Sometimes you can sit a cylinder on top of an engine and it's okay and then you tighten it down and it's really horrible but this is very very smooth. So the piston and the piston ring and the cylinder wall are all doing their part. There are still one or two more parts to make for this engine, the drop arm that controls the valve gear and the exhaust pipe. But that's not too big a job. I'll probably feature this in the next episode. 
In this clip I'm applying some of the sealant that I used on the lower cylinder cover to the upper cylinder cover. Then poking out some of the surplus with a piece of metal and I'm now fitting the cylinder cover to the engine. It's a bit of a messy job and you do need a cloth with you at all times to remove the residue that oozes out as you tighten down the cylinder cover. And once again of course the same rules apply, do not over tighten these nuts. It would not be good to shear off one of these studs. Even though it's slightly easier to remove an upper stud than a lower one, we can do without doing it. Time now to give the entire cylinder a good clean with the cloth. And then trim off the surplus gasket from the outside edge of the cylinder cover. And the last thing to do is to make a suitable plug for the hole in the centre of the cylinder cover. This is just a piece of threaded brass rod with a 4BA nut on it and lock tighted in place. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.